we know that for people who have fairly medium social economic status, sound financial circumstances, um, the perturbations in markets and uh, the like don't really alter your happiness too much. Um, although this will be an in interesting test because this is qualitatively different than anything we've seen in that research. Um, but there is, so my sense is that, um, that the economic factors stream into sort of stress-related regions of your psyche and your nervous system which you can document in the lab, and I think that's pretty clear. The loss of a job or the, the loss of a house activates stress. But there's this other branch that we study in our lab um, that I write about in Born to be Good, which is about connection and about trust and about, um, about devotion. Uh, and those dimensions to happiness are pretty independent of economic conditions are really focused on the social and the, the face to face. And it's interesting, there's a little subterranean current right now in thinking and I'm hearing, uh, I'm getting calls about this where people say, gee, you know, it's funny. I, had, I just talked to somebody recently. Um, I got laid off, but suddenly I'm spending a lot of time with my boyfriend and, and you know, we're having a great time. And, you know, yeah, I, I'm sort of having trouble paying the bills a few months from now, but there's this upside to it uh, that may refocus us to a better definition of happiness. I can give you the textbook answer, which is there are those who feel that free markets, like evolution, don't have a moral direction. They just reward what is appealing and, and sort of sort out what is, it is not uh, appealing. Um, there are those who really believe that a opening cultures to, to markets, um, like Robert Wright uh, wrote very interestingly about how um, the interconnectedness that is fostered by uh, free markets and the cultural transmission uh, has lots of benefits. And I think that's true, that it brings people different perspectives face to face builds up cooperative bonds. We know that as you take different cultures and you lock them into economic exchange, they become more cooperative. So that has a cooperative, if not moral, trajectory. You know, and then at the same time, of course, there is the uh, exploitation that we see, for example, of oil resources in Nigeria.